Hey, this is Jake. Welcome back to another video. And I'm very excited to show you uh, what I cooked up here. Long story short, we're talking about composition today, but we're talking about composing in a pretty unorthodox manner. Um, what I wrote here isn't something I can normally write. And the only reason I was able to write it is because I consulted something that humans cannot do. And humans cannot be random. Truly. Uh, it's not built into our brains. So I decided to consult something that is actually is random, and that's the number pi. So how did I use the number pi to help me make random rhythms? Well, in the last lesson, I gave you a chart of 16 different rhythm patterns. Those were every different variation of 16th note and 16th note rests that fit into one beat. So I have these 16 different rhythms here. All I did was I took the number pi and I converted it into hexadecimal, which is base 16. And that gave me this string of characters. So all I did was pick from the first number, I just assigned my first rhythm. And then the second number gave me my second rhythm, and my third number gave me my third rhythm. I did that 16 times, and it gave me four measures of music. So this is what that rhythm sounds like all on its own, just being played with palm mutes. So that's not a very intuitive rhythm. I really had to hear it a few times before I was able to play it. Uh, but the next step was to program in that rhythm to a kick drum on Reason. And then at the exact same time on that same drum kit, I had uh, my cymbals doing loud quarter notes and I had my snare doing a simple backbeat. So I had something to help glue this whole concept together because that's a very errant and confusing rhythm. But with the simple 4-4 four four in the background, it helps gel things together. The next step after that was to track the guitars. And I plugged into my new Heibu distortion pedal from Zen Zero. I ran that through some free VST plugins on an Ableton and then I quad tracked that rhythm. And here's what it sounds like with bass guitar and the drums and the guitar. So after that, I had the option to not rest things, all right? And in the last lesson, I gave you everything with rests. Well, here's this rhythm without writing in the rests. Here it is just writing it out how I normally would write it out. And uh, you can actually hear me performing it this exact same way. And now the last element was to actually turn it into a riff. And to do that, all I did was just use the notes E and F, all right? Open E in the first fret, zero, one, zero, one. This is very genty, but it's not official gent because this is a six string. You definitely need a seven string if you really want to play gent. But it is very, very gentish. So take a listen to the riff uh, now with, uh, with the first fret in there as well. So I wasn't done just yet. I had this weird thing, but I wanted to turn it into more of my kind of music, uh, and I wanted to make it weird, so I picked one of the weirder scales I know, which is the Byzantine scale. You can think of it as Phrygian dominant, but with just a sharp seven instead of a flatted seven. Uh, and from there, I took the same rhythm, and I wrote a lead line on top of the rhythm, and that sounded like this. So I'll be honest with you, when I first started getting into this project, I had no idea what things were going to sound like, uh, and I was very pleasantly surprised by the time things worked out. There's no way I could have written this just by sitting down with my guitar and coming up with rhythms. And that's the power of consulting these strange writing techniques. Uh, something like the 12-tone system is another example where you're going to get things that you wouldn't just naturally get if you sat down to write. So did I actually write this? I mean... Yeah, no, kind of. I mean, I facilitated its existence. That's all I know. It wouldn't exist had I not sat down and put all this time and effort into it. And that's really all I care about. Uh, I don't care how you wrote it. I don't care how you got it. I don't care um, where it came from as long as you made it. You know what I mean? Uh, that doesn't mean you go, go rip somebody off completely and call it your own. It just means did you spend some time and effort into making your own thing? And that's what I did here. Uh, definitely some of it was created by the universe and randomness and chaos. But once I had that chaotic little core, I was able to have fun with it. I was able to put my own style on it by adding in the Byzantine scale, for example, choosing to do it with palm mutes, uh, and then choosing to do it with that zero and one to give it kind of a gent flavor. We could have done this with a Latin song, right? Uh, it's just not what I was feeling with it. So when you decide to do something silly like this, like let the, you know, the stars literally point you to what note you're going to play, 
you do have to do some massaging to get things to sound musical. And uh, I tried to do that with this example. I tried to make it sound musical and also to be um, weird at the same time. So I, I don't know. I think I succeeded in this case. Uh, what will I do with this riff? Who knows? Maybe we put it, put it into an actual song here one of these days. But for right now, I just wanted to really demonstrate to you the power of consulting numbers uh, when you are writing riffs. And something as simple as what I did here. There's a million variations you could have done. You didn't have to pick pi. You could have picked the golden ratio. Um, my rhythm would sound totally different if my chart was arranged in a different order. So there is just a million various variables that led this song to sound this way. And uh, I hope you get a kick out of it, and I hope you enjoyed listening to it. So if you enjoy videos like this, please subscribe, uh, leave a comment below, and like. And uh, I will maybe do something else in the future like this.